Hi everybody, welcome back to Math Notations uh, videos and Math Notations. Uh, I'll be posting this video on my blog shortly, but I uh, wanted to do a more sophisticated ratio proportion problem and demonstrate how it could be introduced at the middle school level before formal <clears throat> algebraic techniques or other procedures. Uh, I will assume here that the student understands fractions. As I shouldn't say that. that that's a big, <laughs> that's a big one to swallow. Well, has uh, has been introduced to fractions and ratios as a way of expressing fractions or an application of fractions and proportions. Um, that may occur in sixth, seventh, or eighth. Traditionally eighth, but I could certainly see it moving down to sixth grade in our new curriculum. <clears throat> so we have 10 workers, three houses, 60 days, and of course we're asking uh, a standard question here. If you change the number of houses and the number of days, how many workers will be needed? What makes this problem uh, more challenging is that unlike a simple proportion uh, where you have two quantities uh, changing, here you have three quantities changing. And I set up a table which I find extremely useful for developing an intuitive grasp of ratio and proportion, particularly when you have three quantities. And I also mentioned here there's an assumption that you could ask students to fill that in. You could say, you know, prompt them, what assumption are we making, boys or girls? If there's no response, then you could write all workers are building at stop, and they should be able to complete it, <clears throat> meaning at least one person could say same rate. And rate here is at the heart of this whole issue. We'll come back to that if time permits. There are advanced methods to be brought to this question. I have some highly sophisticated uh, readers of this blog and, and this YouTube channel who know how to use uh, variation, who can express a relationship among houses, workers, and days, like H equals KWD. Um, they could also set it up using factor label methods, conversion factors, all the different names that <laughs> are used in math and science classes for dimensional analysis, and you know what it's also called in chemistry. I won't mention it here. So, uh, my goal is to avoid those methods in the beginning. I'm a great believer in using straightforward, intuitive approaches when developing a concept for the younger student. So here we go. I put in the given data, three houses, ten workers, sixty days, and now I change the number of houses, but I keep the workers constant. And that's the key here. Don't attempt to change all of the quantities at the same time. Keep something constant. And that's a typical approach used by, by mathematicians and scientists. For an example, in, an, in a scientific experiment, you would control one or more of the variables in order to see what the relationship among the remaining variables would be. Anyway, keep the workers fixed. Houses are reduced from three to one. What about the days? Before I ask the quantitative question, what is the numerical answer, which some could answer immediately, I focus on the conceptual piece. So I ask a qualitative question. All right, in your learning groups, I'll mention that in a moment, if you reduce the number of houses, will the number of days required be more than 60 or less than 60. <clears throat> learning groups or learning partners I've uh, been using for a long time. When I was teaching, I established this, I would guess, in the last 10 years of my career. I noted that when observing other teachers and in my own classes, when I asked questions, students would either stare blankly at me or, um, well, that's probably most of the time they would stare blankly. They would not take a chance. You know, a few students who are more confident would blurt out an answer. So 
uh, I decided to try a different approach. I might rephrase the question. It would often be the case that the wording of my question was causing confusion. But to really encourage more participation, I would have learning partners of, say, two individuals. And I would say, within your learning partner group or whatever, think about that question. More than 60, less than 60. This enables the less confident student to talk quietly with their partner, and it builds up confidence. And instead of a single reply, I would always look to the group. All right, the uh, John Amanda group, what do you say? Anyway, we would hope that they would say it takes fewer days. Now, numerically, we'd like them to be able to say it's 20. We know that not all students would be able to do that in middle school immediately, but some can. So those groups that can say it, fine, put down 20. Now that the answer is there, others may see the relationship. Explain it, boys and girls. Well, one-third as many houses, one-third the number of days. Three is to one, and this is set up to look like a fraction, isn't it? Three is to one. As 60 is to 20. That's my wife talking to me. <laughs> That's the advantage of working at home. Okay. Uh, or if you want to get to the more formal procedure, which some youngsters need, then call it X, set up your proportion, and review the procedure or method. Remember, most students prefer to use methods and procedures like cross-multiply rather than think intuitively. Now, we all have intuition, but some just are afraid to trust it. Either way, we come to 20 days. Now we're going to, again, keep the number of workers fixed, but double the number of houses. <clears throat> if we double the number of houses, what happens to the number of days? Again, ask the qualitative question first, if you think uh, it's useful, or go right to the numerical. More than 20, less than 20. By this point, we would expect all students to say, uh, more than 20. And I think many students, particularly those who struggled with the first question, would be able to say 40 without a formal procedure. Double the number of houses, double the number of days. Now later on, this will become uh, a crucial type of relationship in mathematics, and it doesn't have to wait till high school. For a constant number of workers, the number of days is directly proportional to the number of houses. More advanced language, days are proportional or vary directly as the number of houses. Days equal constant times houses. That will come later. But remember, we're building this up intuitively. And now we're coming to houses, workers, days. We get to five houses. We don't know how many workers, but we'll keep the number of days fixed. So we've got two of the three quantities we want, five houses in 40 days. And now we would want the students to recognize for the same amount of time, the number of workers needed is directly proportional to the number of houses. Or to say it another way, more workers, more houses. Fewer workers, fewer houses. More houses require more people. There's your varies directly. This one is not intuitively obvious, so we call it X. Set up your proportion. However you want to solve that by cross multiplication. Or 2 times 5 is 10. 5 times 5 is 25. Concept of fractions. We get 25, and this problem is finished. Now there are so many other techniques that I could have brought to this question. <clears throat> I wanted you to see one approach without getting into more sophisticated mathematics with